Hey guys, it's got the, uh, the GX470 and uh, I got a little problem. No confirmation beep when it locks. So I just hit the lock button. Driver's door lock actuator is going out. So I found a uh, pretty nifty solution. You can actually just replace the actual little DC electric motor that's inside the door lock actuator for about five bucks. So you're gonna join me on this Odyssey while I figure it out. So first thing we gotta do is pop off the door panel. Right here, pretty easy. Um, I recommend getting the trim tool. Back whenever I worked for Lexus, uh, they gave them out free, so I got a nifty uh, branded one. Uh, I wanna remove this guy, this little trim piece here behind the inner handle, and then uh, the master um, window switch. Uh, and they're pretty easy. Just get your little trim tool, and you can use a screwdriver, but you know, you're more prone to mess stuff up that way. Pop that off, set it aside. You got the screw right here. There's that guy. Another screw right here. And this guy, if you just lift up, just grab right here where the switch is and lift up, you can get the tool up under there pretty easy. Pop it right out. And just uh, undo that connector right there. Just uh, move those uh, few screws. And the rest of it should just kind of pop off. Just like that. And you'll just lift up on it. Little triangle trim here. And that just pops right off. And then you just lift up on it. And then you gotta undo all your electrical connections for all the lights and the doodads on the back. Speakers. And then you undo the uh, door lock cables. Let's just pop right out. Boom, done, piece of cake. That's the first part. I just set that on the inside of the car so it doesn't, uh, doesn't get damaged. All right, next. We're gonna go inside here. <laughs> Somebody's already mangled this cover. Now I'll show you a real quick tip here in just a second about these covers. They're they're there on purpose. They help keep uh, you know they help keep moisture out of the cabin and uh, wind noise and all that stuff. And people always mangle these things, and it's so easy. You just pull a little piece of it down, and you expose that gunk. That's a little sticky. It's tacky more than anything. Um, and you just get a razor blade and you just cut into the gunk and you can just remove that back and then just stick it back to the to itself later and that way you don't have to mangle this cover um, I'm kind of picky so I'll probably order a new cover if they even still are around and uh, replace it and there's the door lock actuator wire harness you're going to have to undo that and then there will be these uh, these guys right here, and then we'll remove it from this interior piece. So, it's actually, this is kind of warm, so it's just coming right off. I'll try to preserve it as much as I can. So, with the door being black, it's already warmed this stuff up in the sun, so it's pretty easy to just peel back. Yeah, you can kind of see right there how it goes. And you just get a razor blade and just cut it. Uh, that way, you don't have to just mangle everything like a bunch of butchers. Alright, 
Well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove the store lock. Actually, I'm gonna go get the tools I need, and I'll be back in a minute. All right. So the only tools you're gonna need for this next part is gonna be a 10 millimeter socket right here, and that's the uh, window side rail that comes down here. It's just held up by the rubber here, up up here, so you can actually just take this one out, bend it up out of the way, and then you'll need a Torx bit number 30. that done and that's pretty much all that's holding this bad boy in that bad boy is so next we're going to uh, crack this case open I think right here is where that motor is at so we'll crack this case open and then just uh, replace the motor all right be right back convoluted setup going on here guys so I apologize hopefully y'all can see the workbench check here yeah just adjust this all right well we're pretty much gonna be doing this together I've never um, I haven't done one of these before so we'll be learning together so first off I'm thinking that the motor actually goes right there that's about the size of it. I don't know where that mold is. I see there's a little cover here to remove. A couple of tabs. One. Oh, there it goes. And then we just have all these clips to undo, which apparently this is the hard part. So they say. All right. Well, let's see what we can figure out. Just have an assortment of picks and pocket screwdrivers and all kinds of stuff over here to try to get this bad boy cracked open. Once I can get something down in that seam to keep it apart, it should be pretty good. This appears to be a rather soft plastic, so I think it's a pretty malleable, pretty forgiving. Hopefully, it will be nice to us. Yeah. I'm go ahead and just get those out of the way, or at least that one.
Whoops. Take your time. Yeah, I think this is a worthwhile thing to do. First of all, it's kind of fun if you like this kind of thing. Second of all, those door lock actuators are not cheap. Also been warned that there's a lot of little parts in here, so I'm gonna be careful in there. Opening it up. Not have all the parts fly everywhere. That should help if I remove that screw, huh? there. My fingers out of the way. Hopefully you can see it. Now, again, like, I don't know if I said this already, but apparently you can just pry that bad boy out right there. And there's a couple of pins. Oh, the worm gear fell in. That's not going to be fun. Well, this just got a little more complicated. There's the worm gear. The main gear, I can, if I can get it back on its pivot point. Ah, there we go. All right, I think we are good. There's the old motor. And this is the right style. Here's the new motor. And it's supposed to have that D shaft. Don't know if that makes out in the photo. Looks like there's a little piece of insulating plastic. But there's a couple of pins that the motor just sits down on top of and they just go right into those holes. And apparently, and you can see on the old motor, the little sater or equivocal to what are like brushes on a drill um, just wear out and build up debris inside that motor. And uh, that's what causes the problem. Now apparently, <laughs> There's some guys actually going in here and cleaning those, uh, polishing them and repairing them. But these are like $5. So, do what you want. So this will only go on in one way. There it is. And it just slides right on. And it's just held in place by the, uh, by the case. So, now I just got to work this thing back inside and get it to sit down on top of those pins while at the same time not losing the worm gear. A little challenging, especially while trying to get the right shot here, but I'm trying. Set down on the gear all right. 
the worm gear appears to be in place. Everything else appears to be all right. So let's see if it'll just close back up without too much of a fuss. there's something misaligned. All right, yep. Yep. This this uh there's some stuff in this corner that is not uh not lined up, so unfortunately I have to actually take it all the way apart, which is fine. We'll get to learn how it works on the innards. Yeah, as long as you're keeping this thing fairly level, I think honestly it would be pretty easy to do. We'll be able to get this uh, open just enough to fix what's misaligned, which looks like I might actually be able to do. So there's some kind of a switching mechanism right here and that's what had come apart and you really can't see up in there too well I know but that right there I think I got it back lined up everything else looks lined up let us just yeah there it is Snapping right back together just fine. Just fine.
All right, I need to get a little bit bigger tip on the Phillips there. In theory, we're done. Only drew a little bit of blood. It was a lot easier than I was expecting. All right. Well, now we just gotta go. Just gotta go test it out. Time to put this bad boy back in, see if it works. You go ahead and grab that rail, just get it up out of your way. Tuck this bad boy back in. I'm just gonna get him hanging. started my finger so it'll hold it in place for you my big melon of the head out of the way hopefully probably not just kind of run them down it all run down all the way and they uh, they're kind of dimpled so they uh, they center the lock in the hole and then once you get them all run down you can uh, tighten them up the rest of the way they don't have to be super mondo tight just tight all right Let's just go ahead and test it. Plug our harness back in and grab the master switch. Plug it back in. Well, that sounds pretty promising. Not, uh, not attached yet. Well, anyway, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, button her back up. Looks like it worked. Get a confirmation beep and it locks. Take care, guys. One more thing, because I'd be remiss if I didn't include this, but 
I forgot about it myself. You can see back there. But that peg. Come on, focus. That peg goes down inside that uh, mechanism there. Right there. And that's what opens the door from the outside. So make sure you get that peg back in that yellow hole. All right, guys. That's it for real this time. All right. One, one last thing. And this literally is the last thing. Some of y'all may have an issue. Um, so up higher on the door lock actuator, there's a peg that comes from the lock cylinder on the door. And uh, you may have a hard time. Uh, getting that peg lined up with the door lock actuator. So I just wanted to show you real quick a little uh, a tip just in case you have that problem <clears throat> Usually you can uh, stick the door lock actuator back inside the door and uh, line it up with the peg that actually uh, Undoes the the door latch from the outside and that other peg you'll see it's kind of got a cup shape to it And it's a uh, it's got a cross shape to it um, but there's a there's a cup that kind of receives the peg as you put it back up in there But just in case you can't get it or just to keep things simple you can remove this little body plug right here Take out uh, and that that uh, is kind of cool man Lexus Toyota it does such a great job of engineering um, But that screw is captive so you can loosen it and the screw is gonna stay in place You don't have to worry about it falling down on the door And then you can actually just pull the lock cylinder out and you'll see the rod sticking out with the cross shape on the end of it and once you get this back in here if you have any issues you can actually just remove that screw pull this out and then put it back in and you can actually line it up with that door lock actuator and test your key on it and uh, it should just go click click you know there should be no resistance and you know that you have it lined up but just in case that becomes an issue there's also that to consider all right I mean that's it we're done so I just wanted to make sure in case you ran into any problems you knew about those first of all that rod that's on the back side of the door lock actuator that actually uh, it's just a little plunger that sticks down you see it and whenever you put it up in there it almost lines up on itself along with the uh, the uh, lock cylinder rod <clears throat> but just in case you have any issues you just remove that little body plug right there pop that sucker out Get this uh, in there a little loose lined up and stick it back in should be good to go and uh, then piece of cake piece of cake guys there it is all right